We discuss our top five most wanted characters at Universal Orlando on episode 330 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Hey everybody, we're back. We've got a fun show here for you. Um, No, we have. So, of course, I'm Tracy, and with me, I have Lee. Hey, everybody! Okay! <laughs> not quite sure what that was. Hello. Really? No, okay. I'm not that. I'm just, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. And we have Darren. What's up, Internet? And Were we you have. expecting that one? I was, yes. <laughs> yes. And we have Chris. Hey, yo. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that one either. Stop being weird, you two. <laughs> so, how's everybody doing? Good. Good. Fantastic. Excellent. That I wasn't like a hint that. to one of the characters I've picked, by the way. Okay. <laughs> You're just being weird. Right. Um, so, yes, we are discussing um, our top five characters that we've chosen who we would like to see introduced into the Universal Orlando Parks, even. See, I'm so excited I couldn't even speak. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, that's a big but. There has, to be, there has to be boundaries. Apparently. Any safe words? No. No. <laughs> uh, but the characters have to be part of a property currently present in the parks. In any way. But we're also allowed anything Nintendo or DreamWorks. Just to open the scope up a bit. Uh, and they don't need to be meet and greet characters. For example, Celestina Warbeck is a character, but not a meet and greet one. Mm. So, right. So apparently we are going in reverse order. We always do. I know, but I'm picking mine on the fly then. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we've got I've got to, I've got to choose the order then, have I? Oh my god. We've what? how many of these top fives have we done and I you know. still don't know how they go? Our I'm top tra- five top fives. I am we should try- do that actually. We said that before, yeah. I think. I am trying to decide whether I feel strongly enough to go first. But no, I'm gonna let Lee go first. What's your number five? God. God, um, and that isn't one of the properties. <laughs> nope, <laughs> you don't allow that one. Um, I actually mentioned this back on episode three hundred and twenty-eight when we had Dustin McNeil on, and it kind of got mentioned on last week's show again by Darren. You're going to regret mm-hmm. asking me to go first now, aren't you? I already regret everything. I believe that we should have a Quint character hanging around by Bruce the Shark. I think mm, would yes. work yes. really, really well. Um, you know, you've got Doc Brown hanging by the DeLorean. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you have a Jaws character hanging around by Bruce the Shark? Just making it a little bit more authentic yes. and keeping Jaws in the park a little bit more. I think after interviewing Dustin, Dustin and having read that Jaws book, I think... I think I speak for everyone when it says it's made us all very nostalgic for oh, that very attraction. Much so. um, can I just this? Can I, I? I had a bonus one for the end, but I might as well tag it on here then, because I would like to see um, a Jaws skipper running around the London facade asking, "Where is Jaws?" Oh, you've just made Thomas a very happy man. <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be really funny. I mean, obviously, there's only a small handful of us who would actually get it, but it would make us all very happy. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's a dead easy I, one yeah, to I'd do. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It would work mm-hmm. really well. Yeah. Yep. He'd be pulling his trouser leg up and showing off his scars. Oh my god, it would be amazing. Singing songs, <laughs> singing sea shanties, and yeah, yeah. Can you imagine just having a Halloween horror night so everyone's drunk, all singing? Show me the way to go home. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be that'd awesome be <laughs> that would be so cool yep. so yeah that's mine like. okie dokie um, Chris yes. what's your number 5 so I'd like to see <clears throat> a live Bruce in the Universal Lagoon <laughs> when you say a live, live Bruce <laughs> yeah like we just want or just a shark <laughs> just a real just shark random. yeah a great white <laughs> no no actually <laughs> uh, so I would like to see live characters, not just costume ones, of Mario and Luigi in the parks. Yeah. Ah, so, nice. I mean, it's going to be hard to get that because you'll probably just see the cartoon character ones, but, like, live ones that would interact and, like, say, like, 
quirky things like, like, they like do the in- ones from the movies like john Leguizamo. i would kill for, <laughs> for that hoskins <laughs> yes do you know i just immediately saw one of our associates playing that role mm. the popcorn doctor would play either role brilliantly <laughs> it's me everybody or or the bob hoskins ones like what's your name mario mario yeah, yeah. <laughs> Luigi Mario. <laughs> <laughs> I think you will get these as characters at some point, whether they'll be face characters or not. Yeah, that's probably. Th- this is more hoping for the live ones. Yeah, but... they probably won't be. Nice. I like that idea, Darren. Yeah. Well, I'll go ahead and play off of that one. I had this one up uh, number four actually, but I want Wario and Waluigi. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't really know Evil. who they are. The evil counterparts of Mario and Luigi. Okay. Um, which uh, I think I think would be I think you know Mario and Luigi are cool you know characters you know meet and greet characters in the park, but the bad guys always tend to be more fun. I think. Yeah. Like when like when you got like Megatron out there, you know, I, I think he's like a blast, especially the Hollywood one where he can actually talk and interact with people. So you know, having like really animated people playing Wario and Waluigi, I think would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, they're ridiculous names <laughs> <laughs> like Wario you can kind of get but Waluigi yeah, <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> someone someone got lazy at that point <laughs> yeah, <laughs> going with the little... trend there. it sounds better in Japanese I'm telling you <laughs> take your word for it <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool that oh, makes sense yeah mm-hmm. Um. so me then okay I am going with um this this is the one that I was I was said I asked Lee last night. Um, how strict are these parameters? Oh, very. Can we have something that's <laughs> kind of the same? I mean, it is the same, the same, but it's a bit different and not quite. But I have I'm no going idea. for it anyway. Lee's worried now. So Jurassic Park. We now have Jurassic World. So what I want to see is Owen and Claire bouncing around. Oh, no, that's fine. You know, running around the place. You know, looking at the sh- heels. Looking at, yes. Look at, you know, scanning the shrubbery, having a look. Owen with his hand out. Obviously, we've got the raptor enc- encounter. Yeah, well, that is blue Which now, has so blue. That's, no, that's fine. So it does tie in. But I want them, like, running around, tell everyone, have fun, have fun. Don't worry, but all the time, furtively looking around and looking worried. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's kind of like there's something going on. But they're obviously aware that they're in the, they've got the guests to think about. And I think that would be really fun. Yeah, she could be on the phone going, I said, more teeth. We need more teeth. You know, she could have a, a shirt, you know, where how she rips. I would bits not off be against having a Claire <laughs> character <laughs> running around Jurassic Park. I would not be against an Owen either. So we're all right there. <laughs> so, but yeah, I just thought that'd be. Yeah, no, that makes fun. sense. I must admit, I, I did kind of think of having an Owen, but I and, thought and someone you, else might pick it, actually. And you could have a raptor escape. Well, they do have in Hollywood, don't they? Because the raptor encounters are more and out in the open, mm. meet and greet. But you could have it escape mm. and Owen has to get it back into the enclosure cool. every now and again. You know, keep that random, though. So Riding it is a, a motorcycle through the dress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, keep it random so that it is it is like an Easter egg type thing happening, not a scheduled yeah. thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. I like that. Definitely. Yeah. Got away with that one, then. <laughs> no, because <that, laughs> I thought you were good. Knowing you, how you take these top fives, I thought you were going to go something way, way off track. It's for the choices, yeah. <laughs> don't worry. Um, she's, she's, she's using seven degrees of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Just seven. <laughs> <laughs> Six degrees of universal. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, so we'll, we shall go on to number four then. Um, Chris, would you like to go first with this one? Sure. So my number four would, may not be a year-round thing, but it would be a fun thing during a certain season. <laughs> and I would like to see the original Universal Monsters making oh, an appearance yes. out over there. And I think we've talked about that before. That'd be really cool. You know, I mean, it's in their heritage and their lineage, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, you know, seeing some of these these characters coming out, especially during Horror Nights. I mean, if you had these guys set up in a certain section of the park that's normally dead, I guarantee you that'll just draw crowds over there. You know, take your pictures with them, do all that kind of stuff. But it would be cool to to have some of these guys mm-hmm. out there. Frankenstein, that kind of stuff. Did he just steal one of yours? 
Will you, will you put me before Chris on a couple of these next ones? No, <laughs> yes. No. yes, I no, will. Not really. Not really, not really. But that's cool. Very cool. I like that idea a lot. Yeah. I yeah. think you only have to look at All Night Dying double feature at Halloween Horror Nights 25 to know how popular those characters would be because that area, yeah. the black and white characters, when they were out, that place was heaving. Yeah. I mean, we spent... 20 25 minutes in that area oh, one easily. night. Uh, yeah, Dr. Frankenstein, mm-hmm. like the Invisible Man, yeah. they were just Frankenstein's bride was amazing. amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they would go down a storm, and I don't understand why why they aren't a presence in the park because, as you said, Chris, it is their heritage, it's, it's where yeah. they came it's from, their legacy, and they own I'm pretty sure they own every single right to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, that, that would be awesome because you've still got Beetlejuice running around in the park, yet. Mm-hmm. You know, when we were when he I was thinking about home. this, that's it. You know, Lucy's still running around the park. She doesn't have a presence in the park other than that. Mm-hmm. Marilyn Monroe doesn't anymore, but she's still there. Uh, Betty Boop has kind of half a well, Hello the, Kitty star yeah. at this point, but doesn't really have a place in the park. Um, yet yeah. something that is uh, iconic to Universal pictures as Frankenstein, Dracula and the Wolfman are uh, yet. Yeah. The spinning round of one of them carrying a piece of Black pizza. Of <laughs> <laughs> one day they will have a permanent home on my leg. Okay. That is the plan. That's how much I like awesome. them. Yes. So, Darren, what have you got for number four? Ah, uh, well, this was going to be my number five. I switched <laughs> it. And it sounds like I'm playing off of Chris on all these. Uh, <clears throat> mine uh, is the thing I'm using to connect it is the horror makeup show. And uh, upon exiting the horror makeup show, I'd like to use some of that like exit area, the the like in between that and the Terminator area, um, and kind of and kind of have you walk through and see Boris Karloff, uh, Lon Chaney, and Bella Lugosi like in the makeup room. Oh, yes, please. That would be awesome. Like That's with their makeup so... half applied, like some yeah. of the you know, their most famous makeups. Um, oh, nice. You know, standing there with like the like what kind of kit they would have, and the you know the kind of thing as you walk through, uh, and you know exit the uh, show. So. No, that would be amazing. Yes. So, like that really takes it to the to the degree of not meet and greet characters at all, just there to add ambience to what you've just been through. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm up know, for that one. I, yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. Have them, you know, like explaining and or you're having Bill Lugosi with half his vampire makeup on, you know, in front of a mirror, like practicing his lines and oh. that kind of thing as you go by would just, I think, be, be amazing. And then every once in a while, I thought just as a, a little fun thing is to add Abbott and Costello in there. <laughs> <laughs> just like oh, yes. around being extremely freaked out and playing on that, that like only half their makeup's on, only being <laughs> on that half of them every time <laughs> and only seeing that. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. He could have yeah. uh, Bella Lugosi as his Ed Wood character. I was, I was just thinking like Ed whacked Wood. off his <laughs> on coke. Yeah. Or heroin was it he was on. Let's shoot Ask this you... f- <laughs> Leap. Sit on his lap and stuff like come on, come on, come over here. I need to watch that film again. I haven't seen it for no, too long. That. Come over for a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the strings. <laughs> I love that film. No, that is a really like inventive one, Darren. I like that a lot. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think we're done then. No, it's really because, like you say, it's gone. Like you, when you think characters, you just think, like you say, just wandering around characters. Mm-hmm. That is something entirely different that you've never, you wouldn't have seen in the theme park before. I think it would work really, really well. It's kind of like a museum exhibit, kind of, but a living one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um. Right. I'm heading to Hogsmeade. Um, don't you dare <laughs> they're already kind of represented that's fine in the in the park but not as a, a character to meet they don't um, have to be a meat character remember <clears throat> no this is the not a meat character and I would like they're them to be a veggie character <laughs> you are hard work sometimes <laughs> <laughs> cheers Chris I appreciate that yeah <laughs> Um, yes, so this person I think would be an amazing character to meet. You know I'm going to do it. Don't you dare. He's going to be there book signing. Are oh, you? <laughs> <laughs> That's my number one. 
Oh, no. I would love a Gilderoy Lockhart meet and greet. Oh, thank you so much for recommending me. <laughs> I think that would be amazing because that character, that, that actor in that role could just ham it up. You know, and it's I'm just... of course not surprised by your selection. <laughs> <laughs> um, really humbled, <laughs> not really. And of course, they could make things go wrong and release Cornish Pixies, and oh, you know, such a good one. Sorry, Lee. and he could oh. he could claim yeah. stories that we already know that are not necessarily from the Wizarding World. Yeah. He claim, oh, he he <laughs> created these things around the parks just for little in jokes. <laughs> um, I would also like a Severus Snape one too, but as I'm only interested in Alan, Alan Rickman as Severus Snape, then that one's not really worth thinking about. Yeah. So, sorry, Lee. That was originally my number two. I moved it up to my number <clears> one about five <throat> minutes ago. I am now going to change it and put it in as my number four and move what I originally had as number one back to number one. Sorry. And I will make that my <laughs> number sorry. four. But what Who's I. First? What I <laughs> <laughs> but what I thought was. Um, whereas you seem to have gone for Professor Lockhart, I was going more down the route of him being before he went to Hogwarts and converting Ollivanders. This is, I had the conversation mm. with you the other day. Oh, you listening. do not need Ho- Ollivanders in Hogsmeade anymore. No. Because it's not that popular anymore. You've got enough rooms over in Diagon Alley. If you want to do it properly, go over there. So for oh. me, um, you expand flourishing blots out into Ollivanders and have an interactive meet and greet with Gilderoy Lockhart mm-hmm. but it's like a, a photo op so you could have him like give you a pile of books and of course you'll be leaving here today with my entire collected works and you, that's the mm-hmm. you get to pause with him carrying yeah the pile of books yeah. in Ollivanders oh. and I think that would that would be I would I think that would be as popular as and this, and then just as like a little Ollivander's joke, just have his like assistant tell you that it's going to cost like three thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That'd be laughs> like if you'd like to step next door, you can of course purchase all the books. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Or you could convert oh. that to a little classroom and have little Defense Against the Dark Art. You could that lessons would be just yeah that would work as well. And do you know what? I actually I did think about that and I dismissed it because I was late in bed last night thinking about something you could do and. Obviously, it'd go wrong because he's rubbish, really. I love him. You know. Um, but the could... I've even, I've even invented the mechanism that would make it a quick turnaround. So if it was some... I know it's more portions, but say it was going to be something so you just create like a puff of smoke. So it was something into a cauldron. As I say, I know this is portion. So it's just two simple ingredients that you combine together, but they're obviously going to have to clean these things out. So if it's just a lift and rotate thing and that's like the tabletop lifts up but underneath is the next clean do you know what I mean so it rotates 180 degrees so I've even invented how they're going to do it (laughs) I didn't sleep much last night awesome um (laughs) yes so have you forgiven me not really no oh Oh, it'd be so cool to you know to just like let him wander around the whole you know wizarding world and have different things rigged up for him to do because you know they're they're obviously able to do that with the wands yeah so you yeah. know just have him like go to the wand spots but have them rig rigged up the wrong way when he goes there <laughs> that'd be awesome that'd be do the wrong thing so like yeah so that you know the umbrella rains on everybody else instead of him underneath yeah. it, you know that kind of thing like I mean, they, they could do a lot of really cool things with that that's yeah. such a yeah. oh you could have him after the spell backfires so he's completely befuddled. He's yeah. just wandering around going, hello, do you do know who I am? Yeah. Do <laughs> do just come to people yeah. randomly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> right. So I'm just quickly oh. changing my list now. Are you? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, while Lee's changing his list, we will take a quick ad break and we'll be back with the top three. The holidays are here, guys, and whether you're a Grinch or Cindy Lou Who, doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that it's time to start thinking about what to give your loved ones this year. Well, don't fret, because both Disney and Universal have you covered. 
So Disney recently re unveiled the ultimate Christmas time package with a set itinerary full of exclusive experiences that includes a five night stay from December 17th through the 21st. Also includes hopper tickets and exclusives such as special access to Pandora and Toy Story Land, all for just $175 per person per night starting at that. But for all you thrill seekers, Universal has something similar with their winter savings vacation package where you can save over $300 a night for a four night stay for a family of four that includes buy two, get two days free tickets that can be park to park or base. It's a great, great deal. So reach out to us at mouseandmuggle.com where you can fill out a no obligation quote request. And remember at Mouse and Muggle Travel Company, our goal isn't to sell you things, it's to help you make memories. So let our team of experts help you plan your next big adventure. Okay, we are back. Lee is still beavering away, sweating profusely, trying to work out what his top three are. <laughs> no, I've got him now. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm going to go try and make you cry again. Uh, I don't think, I, I don't think you'll, I don't think anyone will have my top three. Okay. No. Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, what's your number three? Ah, okay. I'm going to get this one out of the way because I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually my number two, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to number three so I can get it out just in case. Um, <clears throat> so like Lee said, you know, Celestina Warbeck and that kind of thing, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a meet and greet character, but it might be a stage show or something like that. So I thought of a stage show that kind of like I like to do with Universal, of course, is bring back the the studio feel the you know the the real reason universal exists in the first place and that was to make it you know like a studio and explain movie making and that kind of thing and because of that i want a show called the directors mm -hmm. as a stage show representing universal's most beloved directors hitchcock spielberg zemeckis hughes howard scorsese who actually did a few for him as well and just for fun because he did one for him, american graffiti we can put George Lucas in there as well. Because yeah. you've got Mel's, uh, yeah, Mel's driving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's themed on American Graffiti, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, I, I thought of this as a stage show or, you know, like a kind of a side thing that, you know, that could happen. But also, you know, after the show that you could have them out and meet and greet and photo op and that kind of thing would be really cool. Yeah. yeah. But just like have the show be like a like a Hall of Presidents style kind of thing that they each take a moment and talk about their approach to filmmaking and, you know, like behind the scenes and how movies work and kind of bring that back a little bit to the park. No, I like that idea That's as really well. a really good idea. Gonna be yeah. like an indoor thing to to get you out of the heat too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I know Ron Schneider does a very good Alfred Hitchcock. They could hire him mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah, there's an idea. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> I'm all the, the the park needs more stage shows desperately, yeah. and we've said that for quite a yeah. while now. Um, you need something longer than a six minute ride just to give you time to sit and chill out and but be entertained at the same time. Yeah. I agree. So I'll be well up for that. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm always trying to always trying to get the uh, movie making back in the mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, like you said, it is what yeah. it was meant to be in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we all know Sp Spielberg, that's what he wants truly. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> to have himself in the park all the time. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. No, I'm good next. Okay. There is actually a pattern to this. Like everybody's turn. So don't worry about that. Um, I'm not. <clears throat> good. I'm headed into Zeus Landing. Um, and there are many, many characters who aren't represented in Zeus Landing. Um, so I've, I've sat and I've thought about this. Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you did draw. <laughs> <laughs> we'll discuss that later. Actually, is Yertle the turtle in there? No. Uh... <laughs> I don't know, actually. I don't think so. This is hidden somewhere. Hmm. Anyway, it's not Yertle or Turtle. Um, I would like to see <laughs> Thidwick, the kind-hearted moose, in there. Okay, I'm not quite sure who that is. He's Thidwick. He's lovely. Um, so, in, in the studios, we have donkeys at Donkey's Photo Finish. Down the side of... Hidden down the side of the Shrek building, Yeah. So I'm I'm looking at something similar to that, right? Um, so it's it's just like 
a cute meet and greet and a photo op. But you know, we know the tech, well, we know it's there because it's used quite a bit. Tech's there for Thidwick to be able to have a conversation with you. And I just, I just always want more when it comes to Zeus. And I, I've always liked this story and I think it would be lovely because he's very sweet. So. I'm yeah. just going to look That's, it up now. I'll get the book I'm down later it. and read it I'm to you. It looks nice. What's it called? Thidwick. Gonna have the giant hooves. He's lovely. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think that would just be just a nice addition. Does he come with yeah. all the little birds in his <laughs> Yes? <laughs> of course. Of course you have to. Yeah, Zeus yes. Landing is made for characters. They really should yes. have a lot more than they do. Yeah. And especially one way it, it is you know, the back and forth and yeah, have you? Yeah, I think it, I just think that'd be nice. Definitely. So that's that's a little sweet one from me. So <laughs> Lee, what's your number three? Well, my number three was was originally my number f- four. Yeah. <laughs> um, was the reason behind me putting in the stipulation that it oh. could be a, a, a show type character, aka Celestina Warbeck. Right. <laughs> um, what was added pretty recently, may it I was, say? It was rather self-serving, I'll be honest. Oh. But it's something I have mentioned quite a lot since we began this podcast. You know um, how I'm a big fan of live entertainment in the parks. And Are was you really? Very, was very pleased <laughs> when I found out about the pre-show in Jimmy Fallon. Mm-hmm. So I would like to head over into Springfield and have the B-Sharps as a little stage show in Springfield because I love a barbershop quartet and I think it would give Springfield just a bit more energy Mm -hmm. than it currently has. I think it would work really well. I mean, there's a plethora of, of Simpsons characters that you really could probably just put all the Simpsons characters in a hat and pick one out and you'd go, yeah, I'd quite happily have that person as a meet and greet yeah. character in Springfield. You know, it's it's the one right for the most. But yeah, I think something, some live entertainment in Springfield would, would add a, just an extra element to it and, and just make that <laughs> land and just bring it up a standard a little bit because it's still kind of shoehorned a little bit into that area of the park. Not like when you look at what Hollywood have done, theirs is fantastic. Um, and I think Orlando should be the premier one, and it's not. And I think, but I think having the B sharps there would help. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I like that. Yeah, I mean, I love the Simpsons area because mm-hmm. it's very colorful and I like playing carnival games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a sucker for that. Yeah, I fit in very nicely. <laughs> yeah, cool. I've said it a million times. I've always sort of. I think I even messaged Mike Aello at one point. Said you need the B sharps in there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that rings a bell actually obviously he doesn't listen to me because they're not there nobody listens to you <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris what's your number three so my number three it's nothing crazy impressive it's just more I guess uh, I, I'll take one of Lee's words they're self-serving but I'm a I'm a huge fan of uh, of cosplaying especially when you guys like when they make like big giant cosplays with like mm. very intricate pieces and everything so my original one I wanted is not it wouldn't fit in well, but I, I'm on this one. I'm saying just a meet and greet of the Hulk. Awesome. Like I thought about Hulk. that. Like not just a guy on stilts, but like a whole full suit built. And I've seen some before at, at, at some of the cons and mm-hmm. just seeing it like, being so massive. It just mm-hmm. brings the presence in there and everybody wants to go see it. So I thought that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. To have that there in the park. Yeah. Yeah, and it was big, like larger than life kind of. Yeah. yeah. Uh, see, I was I, I wanted to see like a Hulk Buster suit as well. I've seen that, one around good. somewhere in, in, at some con, and it looked, uh, to yeah. quote myself, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm glad you managed to to make that one work because I actually took that off my list because I couldn't. Obviously, somebody painted green wasn't going to be enough. Yeah. No. 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 And it's yeah, be massive. And I, yeah. And I couldn't make it work, so I'm glad you did. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, no, I think they probably could now. You know, you look with the technology what it is now. The Hulk's one of them that you no, know, you wouldn't expect to see a meet and greet character of the Hulk, and I think it would work really well. Mm-hmm. 
So I'm a bit afraid to ask about people's number twos. It just doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Hanky, the Christmas poo. Ha ha. Oh. He loves me and he loves <laughs> you too. Um, <laughs> right. Um, actually, I'm going first with this one. Yeah. Turns out it's my turn. What do you mean? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You've already stole one. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I'm heading into diagonally. Are you worried? No. Good. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> if you've picked my number one out, if anyone's picked that, I will be amazed. Yeah, I don't think my number one's your number one. Um, so, yeah, diagonally, it's very simple. I've been saying this for a long time. Nocturnally needs Death Eaters. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's it. I don't need to say any more. Absolutely. That's it. Yeah. Simple. And they've had them in, was it Japan for Halloween Horror Nights? Yes. Yeah. So they've done it. Mm. Like they, they could do it for Halloween Horror Nights. I know she seems to be really anal about what she'll allow them to do She's in Orlando at Halloween Horror Nights, and I just don't get it. Um, but just to add, add an element of um, Halloween Horror Nights into Diagon Alley, like when Diagon Alley is a mess, just oh, put yeah. some projections on the front of those buildings so they all look dilapidated and ruined, and then just have Death Eaters going in through there mm-hmm. would be phenomenal. Have projections yeah. up above as well, so there's um, um, Dementors, Dementors oh flying over. Yeah, you could do that yes. quite easy. It's a projected ceiling anyway. You know, or even just on, or a, drones. on an automated pulley system, yeah. have them actually <laughs> flying over physically. Oh, yeah. And just drop the, put some industrial air conditioner units in so when they do come through, just drop the temperature by 15 degrees. <laughs> and then give everybody a free sample of chocolate as they leave. Oh my God. I'll just. Perfect. Maybe this one does need a bit more talking. Stand, a chocolate stand at the end. <laughs> yeah? Oh, you need to have some chocolate now you've experienced dementia attacks. Sponsored by Girardelli's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, no, that is an easy one, but it's, it's very something effective. everyone would go mental yeah. for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Good one. Back. Cool. I've been talking about herself. Well, cool. No. I like that one. I've been <laughs> chipping about everybody else's. Nobody said that to me. So, no, I'm kidding. Um, go on then, Lee. What is your number two? Well, my number two was originally my number one. <laughs> no, no, mm. Things change sometimes, you know? <laughs> I often go on thinking I'm going to have it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I thought it was. it is a cheaty one anyway, kind oh, of. Again. So, I'm glad it's kind of made me... Oh. change it but they're already there I just want a different version of them I think someone's already kind of mentioned it it's not one of their choices but we've already got Bumblebee and Optimus Prime and Megatron oh right yes I know where you're going I want those interactive characters that they have in out in Hollywood because if you watch any of those YouTube videos from those they are unbelievable mm-hmm. like yep. yeah. the the license they give though uh, megatron especially to to rip into people yeah. it is phenomenal <laughs> but wasn't it megatron where the little boy came dressed with optimus prime yeah head. And that was, was the best oh, thing was, i've ever like seen bowed down to him and stuff it was amazing that and I was kid like, won the internet for me that was they've, brilliant they've done it at universal studios florida um when gregory was part of the team he used yes. to work at that and they tested it for one day and the reason they gave for them not implementing it on a permanent basis was um, the amount of non-English speaking guests. Like, because it doesn't make sense. Then why yes, have donkeys yeah. photo finish then? Because it's exactly yeah. the same thing. Why is that there? Yet you won't have these interactive transformers. But if I go to Singapore or somewhere like that, I'm not going to be expecting everything to be in English. When we went to um, Port, of Port of Ventura in Spain, it was in Spanish. We didn't have a clue what they were saying, but we still got <laughs> the gist. Yeah, I don't you know, understand yeah. the reasoning behind it. It's like we never got Energon either. They had Energon no, drink over true. in Hollywood. We never got that, and we heard they that. were bringing it over. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, ju- I just don't get the thought behind it. Yeah, I'd love to see... Him insulting me. That'd be awesome. It would be it would be brilliant. <laughs> like if you you'd look at like you go over to um Epcot with Turtle Talk with Crush. I love that show yeah. so much. And to have that interaction Not the character meet and greets are weird because yeah. they're they're awkward. I mean even when we had I kids never know what to it, say were, to them. it was awkward. Well, I mean another perfect example is the one I think it's Magic Kingdom. 
uh, I forgot his name from Beauty and the Beast. Gus, something with a G. Oh, uh, Gaston. 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 Yeah. Gaston. That's the one. Yeah. Like he's a he's an awesome meet and greet. Yes. If you go look at his videos online, it's hilarious what yeah. he does. Well, apparently he's been stopped from doing a lot really? of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, he's had his wings clipped, which I think's yeah, wrong. They were amazing when that when the videos were coming out doing like press up competitions with people and yes. stuff. It was yes. fantastic. And proposing to the little princesses and things like that. And, and it's oh. such a shame that yeah, I don't I don't understand I it because it, they're the best type of meet yeah. and meet and greets. When, and mm-hmm. the individual things that happen like that that not everybody gets no. it makes people's day. Well, even, you get something that's different. Even. Um, in Town Square Theatre that they took away the talking Mickey Mouse as well. That's not there now and I don't... <sighs> All that money they threw at that technology. Yeah, I don't and... understand wow. it. But yeah, I want to see those Transformers in there. Just Megatron, not even the other two, just him. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd, I'd go for that. Definitely. Pretty cool. Uh, Chris, number yes. two. All right, I don't think this one is on anyone else's <laughs> list. <laughs> Better not be. <laughs> we'll see. But so this one isn't so much like a meet and greet. It's more the well, my next two are gonna be more like experiences that go on there. Okay. So it's something similar to the lines of uh Doc Brown, kind of wandering or Beetlejuice, that kind of thing. Awesome. But I would love to see, and his character name is Rick O'Connell. Ah uh, and, uh, Brandon Fraser from The Mummy. Mm-hmm. Nice. So, that would be I'd, cool. Yes. Have him hanging around the mummy ride area. You know, talking to people, kind of hanging out, taking pictures, all that kind of stuff. And then, like, you know, they can every now and then set up, like, something that happens where he freaks out and, you know, kind of starts his adventure kind of thing and runs into the mummy ride or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but just something that, that, you know, just brings life to the area. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. I think people would love to see that. I mean, yeah. even how old that movie is, it still holds up really well. It's a great, you know, character and could be a great addition to, you know, meeting in the park. All right, great. Yeah. And isn't there a Starbucks great. a couple of doors down? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you could just run This ride would have gone a lot better if I'd have got my cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that would be awesome. <laughs> we can just run over there and grab a cup for him and bring him over. <laughs> yeah, that would yeah. be great. Oh, I was thinking too, like just have him like stand in front of there and talk about, you know, how like he can take on all of Egypt and, you know, talk about, you know, how, how he took on the pharaohs and the mummies and everything and then have one of those giant stilt guys behind him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like, with his arms crossed. And yeah. Just have him turn around and see him. Oh, that, oh, that would be so good. <laughs> I think sometimes they're the best, the best characters in the part that aren't necessarily meet and greets, but you can, like you say, Doc Brown. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have a place in that park anymore, yet he's one of the best characters mm-hmm. in that park. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like like you said, though, like having him like just go around and talk about how great he was and, you yeah. know, how great the show was or, you know, just sitting around bored in front of the in front of the ride, like, you know, just leaning up against the railings and or hanging out by the lockers. <laughs> like, hey, can yeah. I help you with that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm a pretty big deal around here. <laughs> <laughs> then you could have him in, like, the load station going on the ride. You're not really going on this, are you? They know there's mummies and things out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, this is real. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, uh, yeah, that's such a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I like You can go one. all over there. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Darren, talk number twos to me. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Well, I am going the uh, the Disney Star Wars route of the photo op meet and greet for this one, really? and this is I am taking a one little piece. Of, <laughs> this is one of those ones where I, I had to really reach in there. And in the horror makeup show pre show area, <laughs> they have some you know the makeup and effects and stuff from different things. And they and w- one of the prominent uh, display shelves is Hellboy. Oh yes, is it still there? Yes. I love that. Oh, Darren. yeah, the gauntlet, the gauntlet, and everything else. So the gun, <clears> his <throat> guns there. The uh, what's he called? A Samaritan. Mm. Yes. So for the photo op, uh, it's going to be in the lab uh, set with Abe Sapien in the tank. Awesome. And yes. Hellboy and Liz outside, and you know you go up there and do the photo op meet and greet, much like you do with like uh, Chewbacca, Darth Vader, yeah, and that kind of thing. Awesome. Uh, over at Disney. I think that would be awesome. That would be really so here's cool. Here's a question. New Hellboy or old Hellboy? Uh, I would go old Hellboy personally. Yeah. But Okay. 
I mean, new Hellboy, it, it might be awesome, awesome too. I yeah. think I think he's yeah. going to do a great job at it. So mm. it looks the part. Mm. Oh, yeah, love Hellboy. Yeah, I need to but watch them. Liz and Abe, I definitely want the old Hellboy. I, I definitely love how they looked in there, and it'd be cool they could do the photo effects afterwards, and you know, have Liz's eyes on fire or whatever, yeah. you know, in the picture when you take it. Because you basically just has the backdrop as a as a huge screen with Abe Sapien mm. sort of swimming around. Yeah. But I think, yeah. yeah, they could do a, a really flesh out that set, set and make it really cool to go yeah. in. And, yeah, that would be awesome. Every now and yeah. again, you could have, I can't remember his name is, all the clockwork pieces. What's he called? Oh, yeah. I want to see, what's he called? Rasputin. I'm sure we've we talked uh, about yeah, this before, the, oh, the original one. You know, just every now and again, I've have that character, because I thought he was brilliant. Oh, that yeah. weird, uh, the German one from Hellboy 2, you know, with the mist no. head. It looks like Robbie <laughs> the Robot from Forbidden Planet. Was it Ras- no, no, Rasputin? Was what's thing. his face? Wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, the one where he's like his clockwork heart and he's yeah, in the sewer mean. and he's fixed himself and everything. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. now. I can't think what he's called. Oh yeah, Rasputin was the main guy. Yeah, he was. Oh yeah, and of course, after Animal Actors closes, all their cats can come over here to retire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cronin, Carl <laughs> Rupert yes. Cronin. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. I thought he was yeah, a good no, film. that I would be. I'll be up for yeah. Hellboy anywhere in the parks. Yeah, that was isn't yeah. Hellboy Marvel as well. So, uh, oh yeah, there, there you go, go, Darren. You've got and double you go. double the chance to put him in. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that would be walking, awesome. Have him walk around with a cat on his shoulder would be so great. Yeah, <laughs> and filing his horns down. Oh my god, right, we need this so badly now. It would be amazing. You realise if that happens, my mother's coming with us as well. She's a huge Hellboy that fan. That would be awesome. <laughs> Which is really weird to think about my mother being a Hellboy fan. Yeah, anyway, that would be yeah. so cool. Oh, I've just realised some of the routes I could have gone down now. <laughs> is that yeah. regret I smell, Lee? I'd have loved to have had a blade, a blade character running oh, around yeah. somewhere. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you still got number one to go. Why have we not had a blade at Halloween Horror Nights? No, my number one is... I love my number one. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> tell me about your number one. Then. You want me to do it now? Yes. Oh, I needed the uh, the build up, but whatever. Well, build, um, get, build yourself up. It's again going to be in probably H- Hogsmeade. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's something that happened at Halloween Horror Nights this year that made me think of this. Um, specifically in one of the scare zones, um, the Chucky one. Mm. And I would like to see them do similar thing to what they did with Chucky with Dobby the house elf. Oh, man. Oh, yes. And I think it would work. Oh, where he just really insults you? Well, no. <laughs> but um, just to have... <laughs> to Screw have you. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but just to have like an, an in, uh, it's a way of doing an interactive meet and greet with a, a magical creature. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. it being a physical thing. Then they'll yeah. start selling like one sock for $15. Yeah. I was going to say, hey, you, you, him, you just give it to him and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's your 15 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Here's uh, sock. He's free. Good job, kid. You. Next. <laughs> you'd have to, you'd have to just wear one sock yeah. to go and meet him. It give him a book with a sock in it. It just, I think it I would think work brilliant. really well. And I, I, I'm surprised because I'm sure they've used that technology. Not technology. It's not really technology, is it? But whatever they've done with Chucky a couple of times, at Halloween Horror Nights, but never used it for anything else. And yeah. I think for something like Dobby, it would work perfectly. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Cool. Um, because it's not enough characters in. The Wizarding World. There isn't any really, is there? You'd Celestina Warbeck and like notable characters. And I know that comes down from a JK Rowling mm. thing. See we'll get um, we'll probably get into honorable mentions later, yeah. so anyway. But you, you know, <laughs> you have got your, your conductor of bus and train. Yeah. I just wanted random I think I'm sure when it first opened they had random witches and wizards mm-hmm. just sort of wandering around Hogsmeade like the they would be in Hogsmeade. Mm-hmm. Which is sad that it, if it was true that they were there when it first opened, that they got taken away. They were maybe just get inundated with um, requests from guests. And how busy it is as well. Yeah. It probably wasn't easy for them. No. It's just a shame. But there you go. That's my number one. So I'm I'm kind of glad you chose Gilderoy because it made me, I think Dobby's probably my best no, one. I think really. that's better than Gilderoy. 
<laughs> I'll be honest. Um, Chris, what is your number one? Numero uno. So this goes back again to the same thing where um, he's kind of interactive. Again, like a Beetlejuice, like your Doc Brown. But I would love to see uh, Dr. Ian Malcolm walking around <laughs> the Discovery <laughs> Center in Jurassic Park and wow, just kind yeah. of, you know, interacting with the, uh, you know, the scientists that are there, you know, running through his, his very cautiousness about it and, and just, you know, playing Dr. Ian Malcolm. I, I love mm-hmm. that character. I love all the things he says is sarcasm, wittiness, all that kind of stuff. And I think that would be a really cool, like wandering character going around in there. And that would also bring, I personally, if you knew that Ian Malcolm is walking around the Discovery Center, you're going to see a lot more people going down there. That uh-huh. is a good point. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you could have oh. the the usual universal dig where he's like talking about, is it Pirates of the Caribbean where he mentions, you know, but when yes, Pirates yes, of the yes, Caribbean yes. doesn't go, what goes down, the pirates don't eat the don't eat guests. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah, yeah, that would work really well. I'm not sure how I feel um, um, uh, mm, about that. It'd be, a tough, <laughs> it'd be a tough one to add, like. But yeah, that would be really cool. You missed that one, Lee? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and just like just dropping, ignore. putting drops of water on people's hands and saying, "Look, it's chaos theory." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? No, that would, that would no, that's awesome. one of my favorite. I actually favorite like the idea yes. more of random walk around characters than than actual meet and greets yeah. to be honest yeah 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 yes i do as well depends. i think it depends on the the character yeah. yeah yeah some of them are better in a controlled environment like that but then yeah, yeah right. some definitely lend themselves to improv and like mm-hmm. doc does definitely yeah. that would not work as a as a bog standard cue meet and no. greet and move on no. No. no 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 and beetlejuice wouldn't either no I don't think so. No. no, definitely not. And then he couldn't go inside garbage cans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Darren, awesome. talk number All one right. to me. Well, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm a big fan of uh, Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have said something, I think, Darren. I think I know where Darren's going because I kind of expect. What, Back to the Future? Specific character. Uh, the, the, well, the DeLorean. It's characters. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. I want <clears throat> 2015 Marty Jr. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Griff and his gang. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Ah, you didn't go where I expected you to go. Okay. Yeah. I Because, you know, the, it does tie in because that's the DeLorean they have there is the uh, the Mr. Fusion DeLorean. Ah, so yeah. It point. works, fits in just fine. Does he have the like long, sloppy sleeve? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, I'm crocking. I'm walking here. Yeah. <laughs> What's great is you can have like the same actor. And then what I was thinking is just like, you know, a little show that they could do as they enter and exit that area, you know, maybe involving the lagoon a little bit. <laughs> yeah. fly, you know, <laughs> about water. You don't need the holographic <laughs> shark as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, a, just a little something like that, you know, as they come in and out. Uh, uh, that would be pretty cool. No, that would be awesome. Yeah. You know. Imagine if they did that when that park was with Back to the Future. Oh, no. yeah. So cool. oh yeah. See, I thought you were going to go down the route of old Biff so you could have him playing off against Doc Brown. No. Oh, that would be really good, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll take that one. <laughs> but no, that would be awesome. Yeah, I like yeah. that. <laughs> Yeah. Then you'd have to put Darren's want that because then if they go down that route, then surely eventually they have to convert Mel's drive into Cafe Eighties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and just the uh, the costumes on Griff and the gang are just so <laughs> yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Like that that just lends himself perfectly for a photo op. So oh yeah, yeah, and have Doc switch out to the yellow, you know? Yeah, the yellow lab coat <laughs> too. Have him peel off his face when yeah. he comes out. <laughs> I was say, like you used to do when you were a kid with that PVA glue where you'd paint your hand and let it dry <laughs> oh, and then yeah. peel it off. You could just do what yeah. you do with that. <laughs> yeah. How do I look? You does, look great, Doc. <laughs> does Does Marty get to wear the $15,000 Air Mags? <laughs> yes. It has to be authenticity. It has to be authentic. <laughs> Too true. Awesome. Right, so that leaves me then. But number one, I didn't, I didn't purposefully work that out that way. Um... So I'm in. I'm going into port of entry now. Okay. Um. Oh, Harry Potter. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey! You've already... Uh, I'm allowed to, but I'll beep it. Yeah, well... I might miss yours. Wouldn't I'm, be the first time. I'm not bothered. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Um. So, yes, part of entry. I want inhabitants there. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, but not just walking around at, at street level. I want someone in an apartment across from the singing teacher, leaning out the window, screaming across them to stop the noise. And the singing teacher is singing back to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I want a jailbreaker. I want them looking around. Oh, that would be yeah. cool. Looking dodgy, asking which way is the shore? Because obviously they want to catch a boat and get out of there. Oh, but then yeah. if, they, if they played it right, whoever's being targeted by the jailbreaker, a couple of minutes later, a policeman comes up with a picture and says, have you seen this criminal? Awesome. And oh, you man. see who's honest. And I just, nice. I just went, oh yeah, that's really good. Oh, you I know, haven't come up on that jail bike <laughs> that they have. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I, right up there. I just want all these little snippets of life that are dotted around there that oh. I love because I write short stories about this place. To me, it's an absolute bustling world. But it does; and it has its whole backstory. We covered it yeah. on our on our focus on part of entry that it it has a backstory. Yeah, and mm-hmm. in my head, that place is fully fleshed out. I know everybody that lives there and I want everybody else to meet everybody that's in my head who lives there. <laughs> you know, and I'll have just... people actually renting the crazy vehicles. <laughs> yeah, <I'm... laughs> the rental place and taking off with them. Oh, Every time we go, the dirigible's already rented. Yeah. I am gutted. Because you have people at the stand like bartering and like arguing with each other over the price of stuff. Do you know, well, oh. this is it. Yeah, have people, you look, you buy, and all, you know, with all yeah. the, the exotic wares. The thing is, with drones nowadays you could have dirigibles yeah flying yeah. above you know oh. and i just especially for yeah. that you know you walk in and that's your first i yeah. mean it's already stunning but it's a bustling port town and it's alive i just couldn't think of a better way to start a day because they do put, and finish and end a day. They do put characters in there at like really busy times. I know they did when it first opened, yeah. but not enough. It does need. Not like that. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen anybody there in ever. Yeah, I don't and think not we interacting ever have. with their little like not interacting with their elements and everything there. And, no, oh, that would be so yeah. awesome. Yeah, it would be awesome. Like not you... even necessarily to be worrying about guests coming in, just being like going about their everyday business in part of entry. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, there's things that you've got, the, you've got the lovebirds sitting up there. You could have somebody walking around with a cage with the door open going, has anybody seen my birds? Yeah, that would be funny. Yeah. You know, just little things. But it, oh, that way it also gets people to look and see the details. Yeah. So, yeah, you know. I can't so, wait to go back to islands. That's what I want. No, so, that's a good one. No, oh, thank you. Well, it is it's a so. place that really lacks characters. We've said it. God knows how many times it on the show. It doesn't lack characters. It lacks. there, but you've got to have your imagination to unlock it. I have a wild imagination. Mm-hmm. It just lacks a well, certain energy. And it yeah. would bring energy, yeah. Well, hopefully so. that new park that, that just opened in, I think it was at Utah, was it was at Evermore? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Nevermore, was it? Where, Nevermore? Oh, no, I thought it's not Nevermore. I thought I it it's was. it's Evermore. I think it's Evermore. Nevermore, I think, has copyrighted. Yeah, but um, but basically, it's like a you're you're in an RPG and you've got a bunch of NPCs, you know, around you, and the actors aren't playing famous people, but they're just you know they're playing villagers in their town and that kind yeah. of thing like that. So hopefully, like you know, having a dynamic like that in another place, Universal will see something like that and mm-hmm. see that it can definitely work, and people are looking for things like that. So. Yeah, you're right. It is Evermore. I'm just looking at the website now. Yeah. Yeah. Nevermore is uh, from the other park. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Nevermore Edgar Allan Poe? No. Yes. The Raven. Yes. So I find it interesting that I'm, I'm just looking on the him. Evermore website and they have a seasonal event and one of them's Mythos. That must be <laughs> copyrighted. You can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks cool, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but oh, that would be so, that's such a good idea. Yeah. Oh man. I like that. I need to go to this place. It looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so has anybody got any bonus mentions, some honourable mentions? We could probably sit here for the next three hours now because I'm sure, I'm sure while people have been coming up with characters, it's sort of sparked off things in other people's heads. I know I have. I'd love a blade. 
Yeah. Um, like you go down the Marvel route with so many characters that aren't like everyone mentions Marvel and you think Spider Man and yeah, your usual suspect. Yeah, Marvel goes way deeper than that, like Hellboy, like Blade. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd like to see mm-hmm. like the Electro from the Spider Man ride. Yeah, like the crazy, oh, awesome. cartoony one. Like, yeah, yeah. All the Sinister Six from there, like you know, yeah, Doc Ock with the bull cut and everything, and. If they could have him like rigged up to walk out on the tentacles and everything, that would be amazing. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, there's there's so many. Well, there is. You think like just a, in, just in Harry Potter alone, you could come up with. Oh yeah. Like a million characters you want in there. Oh, the Simpsons. When you were talking about the Simpsons, I was thinking about the uh, uh, the Michael Jackson character. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Happy about, birthday, um... Lisa. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, it's your birthday. <laughs> they could have that. That's what they need. That character walk around so you could tell people when you go into um, <laughs> looking out for the birthday fast food buttons. boulevard. Yeah, and just sing random birthday messages to people who've got birthday buttons on. Yeah, oh, gotcha. that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. I think, uh, I think it'd be cool to have like uh, groundskeeper Willie there. Oh, like, oh. working. <laughs> Picking up the trash and stuff. And yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. They can't take a picture and he just gets mad at you. That would be like, awesome. Off the grass. <laughs> can't be able to sass That was quite a good Scottish accent. Oh, just accent. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what are you on vacation? Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, Leon Kompowski. Awesome. That was his name. Yeah. Just have him in his whole mental institution get in gear and all that. But talking and dancing like... Michael Jackson, that'd be so great. Yeah, see, I nearly thought yeah. about, I nearly, I nearly went down the route of comic book guy. Like, actually. Comic book guy? Oh, and standing in front of the yeah. comic book yeah. place. It's like, this is actually, not an actual oh, comic book inf- shop. Oh, gosh, yeah, an, an information booth right there. <laughs> oh, yes. You have to go to him for information and be like, yeah. okay. That would be brilliant. Clearly, you don't know how to Google this yourself, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I thought about going down Apu in the quickie map, but I thought, hmm. Probably wouldn't uh, get away the, with it. Who's the one that hosted everything? Uh, Phil Hartman's character. Uh, yeah, from the uh, um, uh, you'll probably you remember me. me as Troy yeah. McClure. Yeah, Troy McClure. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> It'd be a fun one to walk around in. The Sim- There's a lot of like you said, you could just name anybody from The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. nobody's mentioned Ned Flanders. No, I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, locally. that would be brilliant with his left-handed shop. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my god. <laughs> oh, it useful for me. I, I really like that show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's why I did. Hey, everybody! Can I have Doctor Nick wandering around? Yeah, you got Bumble Me, man, with a taco truck. Come on, Doctor Nick's got to be at the first aid station. Yeah, <laughs> well, <he> could... <laughs> some of the random aliens from Men in Black. Yeah, you know, yeah. just out and about. Oh, that'd be great. And like, yeah, just fill out the immigration room with them. Well, yeah. that was. Yeah, uh, I, I went back and forwards. I, I wanted to use the way they do Chucky, and I thought. Oh, it yeah. works with Dobby, and I thought about the worm guys from Men in Black as well. Oh, I thought yeah. that could work as well. Guys guys awesome awesome in. Yeah, that would be awesome. There's yeah. just so many when you, you when you think about it, it it was it was quite difficult. And then once you get talking between oh, the four yeah. of us, you start thinking the well, scope is massive. Yeah. We've all fleshed each other's out, haven't we? Yeah. It's just yeah. I think there's really great ideas there. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I guess that's, uh, oh, that's our topic. I've got another Ooh. one. I did. I nearly, I nearly went down, and I actually didn't choose it because I thought somebody else would. Um, of going down the Triceratops encounter, but with Toothless. Oh yes, please. Oh yeah. And I actually yeah. thought that someone else would pick it, and that's I why I didn't put it. Uh, about no, nobody, nobody did any Dreamworks characters because their characters like character. Okay. <gasps> Everything, I'll agree with you, everything apart from how to train your dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, Toothless is their <laughs> one character and it doesn't talk at all. Anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. Because I was going through that list and I was like, huh. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, huh. Your hums oh, wow. just went down each time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, I guess that's how top five's done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you've got any ideas of, you know, anybody you think would be a good fit, let us know, get it on the Facebook page. Let's start a discussion. Absolutely. You know, it's good to talk. Wasn't that 
ad slogan. Probably. Was Years ago. BT, or BT I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, anyway, yeah. advertising over. Um, right, uh, before we do wrap up the show, I'm going to let you know what's happening over Christmas. I am going to eat until my waistband pops. I don't think that's what you're supposed um, to let everyone know. Shout at everybody yeah. for everything and yeah. have a few drinks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a few. Few has a little asterisk next to it. Yes, may not be this actual amount. German for lots. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, Lee will be here next week with the producers' roundtable, which is promising to be very exciting. It's something we've done on the show before, and I've invited four members of the producer club on to yeah. um, those poor producers do new track lists for Rip Ride Rocket. It, I'll be sending you my list it, too. <laughs> And I've already told them all yeah, they have to idea, sing. The so ghost album. They have to sing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Everyone's wow. up for it. I've got a good group of people already. I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad he didn't take... I, I did, if he was desperate because he wanted a bit more of a female balance, I did offer to... I've got it 50-50 in the but end. But I'm, I'm quite pleased that he declined my offer now. He's mentioned singing. You've done it before, so it wouldn't... It what, a round table? On Rip Ride Rocket track lists, yeah. Because we all did it. That was what, about episode 53? That was a while ago. Because I actually found I've got all of our episodes on your from a certain point, yeah, from 18 onwards. I know I was like, oh my goodness, I may yeah, have don't. to listen to that. <laughs> so yes, Lee's uh, here next week with the producers' round table. Uh, we will then take the next week off. How dare we take Christmas off? In fairness, it would be coming out on Christmas Day, and I don't think anyone wants to listen to us on Christmas Day. I don't want to listen to us on Christmas Day. Um... We've got a busy week with birthdays and Christmas and mother wrestling, and that sounded worse, way worse than it did in my mother head. Wrestling. Mother wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more That's about that. Weird. <laughs> no, you don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> I meant to say mother wrangling. I don't think that's any better. No. No. You know, now with Brexit and everything, they can bring the old traditions back. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Good old English mother wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, and then we're going to be back in January, uh, on January the 1st, in fact. Oh, on New Year's Day. Oh, we are busy. Uh, we'll be back with uh, Rides That Made Me. Yes, I Which recorded is... that just gone with the wonderful Julie Zimmerman. Lovely. Oh, so uh, and lovely Chris, lady. you are heading down for the holidays, I do believe, and you're going to record us some brief reports from the parks over the festive period as well, aren't you? Yep. We'll be on location bringing you breaking news of me <laughs> enjoying the park. <laughs> So that'll be on that one as awesome. well. Awesome. That'd be cool. And after that, business as usual. So, for myself, Tracy, for Lee, Darren, and Chris, this has been episode 330 of the Unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Cut, print, that's a wrap for another episode of the Unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Never miss a show by subscribing on Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and review while you're there. Not an Apple user? You can listen on Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, iHeartRadio, or your podcatcher of choice. Email us any questions or comments to podcast at uuopodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest. Just search UUO Podcast. Keep up with the latest news, rumors, and updates on our blog at uuopodcast.com. Thanks for listening. See you next week.